One, two, three. Ready? There's a new radio station for the LGBTQ plus community. It's time to get loud and proud, UK. This is Hits Radio Pride. Let's play. I kissed a girl. This, this, this. Come on. We're the home of 30 minutes non-stop every hour. Stand a little taller. We work with incredible charities and we create powerful documentaries about life right at the center of the LGBTQ plus community. Loud and proud. Loud and proud. But that's not all. We also know how to party. Oh, baby, this is what you came for. Hello, my simple rejection. Why does it feel so good? This is Hits Radio Pride. But let the world know. Get us on the Hits Radio app, online, digital radio, and on your smart speaker. Play Hits Radio Pride. Hits Radio you could be so many people If you make that way for freedom What have you done today to make you feel proud? Yeah, we need a change, yeah Do it today, yeah I can feel my spirit rising, change, yeah We need a change episode three of series two of Anthony Meets and today um, I'm going to be speaking with a really interesting guy. So Hits Radio Pride is the UK's first LGBTQ commercial radio station and I'm speaking with one of the guys that was behind making that happen. Ross Tilly, creative director of Hits Radio Pride. Hello. Hi, how's it going? I'm really good. How are you? Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, so I'm still working from home part of the time, so it's a bit like being in a time warp. Occasionally, it feels like 2020 all over again, but overall, it's fab. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling, actually. Uh, my living room becomes TV studio, and then it becomes like my lecture preparation because I do lecturing, and then it becomes research space. So I, I know the feeling. Um, but look, i just got to jump straight in there. Hit Studio Pride. Tell me all about that. Well, it's an LGBTQ plus radio station. And I, I think most people don't really realize what one of those is because to be fair, I didn't really know what one of those was. I think um, uh, radio is a really personal medium. Like, you know, when you're listening to it, you tend to be by yourself, you know, community, you watch TV with people. Um, whereas radio, it's a really, it's a really personal thing. So Hits Radio Pride is essentially a, a station for the community and our allies. Um, champions um, and celebrates who we are, um, how we got where we are, and um, and the people who, I guess, bring the soundtrack to every day that we uh, that we are, are still kicking and, and, and being proud of, of who we are. Uh, and I, I've got to ask you, and I know it's cliche, and not that I would ever be cliche, um, yeah. but as a gay radio station, is that just basically Kylie Minogue and Madonna on loop? On yeah, time? pretty <laughs> much. No, no, it's really not. In fact, <laughs> you know what? The, 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 funnily enough, when it's it's actually the last thing that you we think of because I think you know it, it, we have such iconic musicians who form part of the the psyche of of the community. You know, those those artists, like you say. Kylie, Madonna, Lady Gaga, you know, Callum Scott, those types of artists that have a connection to um, to the audience. And whilst the music is such a big part of, of what an LGBTQ plus radio station is, um, there's a heart to it all. You know, there's there's a real opportunity to um, to try and make a difference and to make that personal connection that 
you know, you're not going to necessarily get from watching a TV program or from um, you know sitting in front of a computer in solitary, uh, spending time on Insta or Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Excellent. And I have to ask as well. So uh, it, it's not all just about music, is it? You actually tackle some serious subjects as well. Yeah. I mean, like I say, we're a music radio station. We're based on music, um, but the personal connection that we have to the audience is important too. And as a you know, as a, as a company that owns a number of really big radio brands like Absolute Radio, Magic, Kiss, Heat Radio and Grazia Magazine, there's a really broad mix of, of brands in there. Um, we, we work for a company that allows us the opportunity to, um, to think and to think about how we can use that platform. Um, and, and Hits Radio Pride is no different. One of the big things that we've been looking at is um, uh, it is conversion therapy. Um, you know, it's a really sensitive issue at the moment because of, because of the government backing out of um, making changes to the rules around that. And we know it's a really big issue, not just for people, uh, young people now who are perhaps um, going through an experience involving it, but also the people who've been affected by it. Um, and hearing those stories and sharing those stories on a radio station like Hits Radio Pride, um, it's designed not just for us, but it's designed for our allies and their voice is the one that, that really matters the most when it comes to championing, um, in, you know, our, you know the parts of our lives where we can be more representative in, in other parts, you know, whether that yeah. be how yeah. we are represented in media or how we're represented in society. Yeah. So I mentioned a minute ago, like you are, you pretty much birthed this idea. How did how did it happen? How did it come about? I, I gave the way I kind of describe this is I, yes, I gave birth to the idea. So I already work for the company. I work for Bauer Media. So um, I work in Northern Ireland on our radio stations here, um, and um, I'm really lucky. Our company has this really kind of open door policy when it comes to ideas. And you know, despite the fact that we are diversifying how we produce content, so it's more kind of audio content rather than specifically radio content. Um, I, I grew up listening to these types of radio stations. Um, there were dance stations, and at one stage I genuinely thought that I needed to be a dance fan to be gay because that's all those stations played. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But but essentially they they were there um, almost to put a soundtrack to your kind of crawl of gaydar. That's what yeah, gaydar yeah. radio was. Do you know um, all my all my straight friends used to listen to gaydar radio? It's, it was honestly. I mean, yeah. these are iconic brands. I mean, gay, gaydar radio mm. launched created by the people who ran the dating website um, they they closed down in 2013 and since then there wasn't anything nationally um, that, that really could replace it and I know that there are so many fantastic community broadcasters across the UK who are really working um, on on community radio and community content for the community community content for the LGBT <laughs> community and those the, you know the work that goes into those stations cannot be uh, overlooked it's a huge thing that they're doing and they're obviously targeting their audience but for me growing up being able to listen to like I was feel like I'm part of something so I suggested you know have we ever thought about launching a radio station a pop-up station you know over the summer for you know a way for us to be able to bring all this content together because we've got radio stations all over the uk and each of them um cover pride in, in their own different ways so this was about trying to think how could we use that and bring it together to create something that everyone could feel like they were part of um but it didn't feel like we were just targeting the lgbtq plus community and i think that's the key part of this it's um it, it's called hits radio pride and not um, hits Radio Gay or yeah, Hits Radio yeah, Bi yeah, because um, having pride in who you are isn't just something that we celebrate as uh, as queer people. It, it's celebrated in gender as well as in sexuality. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and I wanted to, and I thought I, I think we could really do this, and I was yeah. really got a positive response. Um, I gave birth to the idea, but the babysitters have been in since then, and <laughs> we planned to launch it as kind of a six month pop up thing, and. Um, and the, the managing director asked, you know, why are we only thinking about this as a six month thing? 
And I was, it, from my perspective, it was more a case of, well, you know, if I go in there and ask for something, um, I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to ask for the world and then come away with nothing. nothing. So, yeah. Yeah. so I was like, well, yeah, it's, a, but I was encouraged by what they were saying was, well, look, if there is a real opportunity here, then let's look at how we do that. So as a, as a commercial radio station, you tend to start with, here is your product. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, how can we make money? How do we sell it? Yeah. Whereas with Hits Radio Pride, it was the other way around. The, the idea, the content, the love, the um, you know the passion to put it together was what led this. Yeah. Not the desire to how we can make money from the community and how we can do more. This was about us trying to do something good yeah. uh, for the community. And uh, do you know what? Actually, how refreshing is that? And it's something I, I, I want to say this um, without tr trying to blow too much smoke at bar or whatever. But they have really hung everything on the balance for this. They haven't gone, oh, we'll give it three months. And if it hasn't made this much revenue or if we haven't got this month of readers or listeners, um, it's out the window. They went, we're going to do this. We're doing it. We're doing it right. Um, and and I, I just think that's pretty amazing you know the pink washing that we see around pride which as much as and th again i get worried about this because i don't ever want to diss companies for getting involved in pride yeah. but where are you the rest of the year come on show your support do you it's know? that it's that it's that and, 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 and quite honestly you know that the since hits radio pride has launched there there have been a couple of other large broadcasters who've launched similar stations um and there have just been summer events now from from our perspective um as a broadcaster we you know we we are diversifying you know we're on smart speakers and mobile apps you know we're we are we already have a huge um structure in place for how we promote those stations and because we have hits radio which is already listened to by more than a million and a half people every week yeah we have an opportunity to promote that all year round uh, and, and like what you're saying there about the fact that you know uh, the last thing I would ever want to do is go into a business and try and sell this idea as a, you know, as a way of making money, as a way of profiteering yeah. from the community. Yeah. Um, we've worked really hard with our commercial partners to really establish the credibility in what we deliver. So our presenters, they are from all parts of the LGBTQ alphabet. Yeah. from all parts and regions in the UK. And we are actively, you know, looking to make sure that the people who are on air represent what the community yeah. is there to do. So if you listen, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's absolutely no fault of the community radio stations of their own, but there are, it is difficult when you're running a community radio station to make sure that you've got people who are, you know, who are always available to be able to do shows because it's a lot of it is is voluntary and it's a you know it's how I started. I started yeah. in hospital radio. Yeah, I loved I, it. It was amazing. Yeah, I did some and community radio as well. That, it, it's yeah. that, you know, it's a yeah. really impassioned thing. But you obviously yeah. accept the help of as many people as possible. So you know, if you don't necessarily have somebody on air who's female or trans or, or of color, then it's difficult to represent the audience in that way. And yeah. this is where I think Hits Radio Pride has got the. The, the moral as well as the um, the financial opportunity to make that happen. You know, we can make sure that, you know, we're putting presenters on. We've already got presenters who work for the business who are out loud and proud. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being able to say to them, look, we'd like you to do your own show. You know, you can talk about what you're talking, you know, you can talk yeah. about the conversation you have with your partner. You know, you can have those conversations that you perhaps might not have always felt comfortable doing yeah. before. And, and that's a really big part of it. Credibility is part of it. And, yeah. and I think, you know, as well as playing the Kylie and the Lady Gaga, yeah. that's, where those, that's where those social initiatives, like helping and supporting people um, who are going through tough times, you know, yeah. celebrating those moments like Pride, like Stonewall, like LGBT History Month. Yeah. Those key moments in the calendar, which don't just sit in, in the middle of the summer. Yeah. And, and I and I love we around we obviously Joe we've been around for two years and at Christmas we always have our Christmas jingles yeah and, um, <laughs> my, and um and I just I just don't think I think the people who created the jingle packages I don't think they ever thought they would ever be able to use the words the station with the biggest baubles <laughs> in an actual jingle and use it for real life so and get think, away with it yeah and get away with it and it fits yeah so, yeah, yeah it's yeah. I, you know it, it's and it's about getting the balance right and yeah. the partners that we're working with they're not just we're not just putting an advert yeah on the radio for them 
you know, we're working with clients like Disney Plus who are looking to champion the content that they, you know, they've got a huge archive of content, um, LGBTQ plus content that they were looking to try and make people aware of during Pride yeah. Month. We can, we can, we can highlight that. This Brilliant. isn't just about like putting ads on. Yeah. Brilliant. So I just want to go backwards with you. So, um, you, you talked there about the talent on the station and they're all, they're all queer. They're under the, 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 the title yes. queer. So yes. in some way or another. Everyone and represents. That, yeah. Well, I, th this is something, you know, I, um, so, you know, I was involved with civil partnerships. I did some TV and, and different sorts of stuff through that. Um, but what happened after that was we found that production companies were at, at coming to us for the development rounds. So they'd have this wonderful idea that attaches to the idea and pitches to TV stations. I did 700 million of them as everybody who works <laughs> at TV does. Um, but there was a TV channel and they actually were brazen enough to give this feedback, right? So the feedback was, love him. What a great character, absolutely love him. I know our people who watch the channel, our audience would love him. Advertisers would hate him. <laughs> He's too gay. That was the actual feedback, Ross. I, 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 you know, it's it. As an industry, um, the irony is we probably have a higher percentage of LGBTQ plus people in in, in any industry than you. Yeah. Would. Media is a very LGBTQ plus. You know, it tends yeah. to be. In fact, I think I read a statistic that I think is it. What is the statistic? Is what three in ten people identify as gay? 57% of people don't identify as 100% heterosexual. Yeah. And the, the radio industry specifically, um, it's actually closer to 8% of people who identify as LGBTQ across the radio industry. Right. Okay. And that's, you know, that's a higher majority. And you would expect as a result of that for there to be decent representation. But I think there's always been, especially from broadcasters like the BBC, not so much more recently, but traditionally about being very careful on how they approach um, the positioning of, of LGBT people on in television, in TV programs. Yeah. You know, you've got this kind of, you know, if they're doing a Colin and Justin and they're doing style and it's, you know, yeah. they're, kind of, they're almost like a eunuch and there's no, you know, there's, there's just yeah. they're completely sexless. It's, you know, yeah. and that's, that's okay. But the yeah. moment that you start creating fully realized people, um, then it becomes an issue. I mean, yeah. you, can, you can understand program even like you know, Rylan from you know on yeah. this morning. You know, trying to get you. Know, you went back ten years. You know, you've almost got Graham Norton. You know, Graham Norton literally was just the you know, a funny person on a stick. You know, yeah. Julian Clary. I'm sure yeah. my age. I'm sure my age now, but Julian Clary. But that yeah. stuff yeah. there, and 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 that's why it's really important because advertisers and commercial businesses can now see how important diversity and inclusivity is yeah and as part of that you know it's part of what we do internally as a business you know we celebrate those milestones internally we we'll talk with our people um and and try and educate them yeah but we know we've got a responsibility to move the dial forward um yeah. in northern yeah. ireland it's a bit more it's a bit different um because we only obviously got same-sex marriage within the last couple of years. Yeah. Because that was considered a political issue, that meant the BBC couldn't yeah. take side. Whereas with us, we were able to say, as a commercial business, we will take a moral viewpoint of this being love is love and everyone should be accepted yeah. for who they are. And we can, we can shout that openly and loudly and proudly. There are yeah. organisations that can't do that because they have to think you know, they have to think that they're neutral. But I'm really hoping that we're moving away from those times. Yeah, and I think whatever. that's it, isn't it? Whenever you're creating a business, you're, you're, the credibility's got to be there, right? Now, I'm definitely, you know, I came out of the closet in the 90s, so I'm definitely that kind of queer as folk kind of guy, you know, and I, <laughs> I am that gay. I worked as a, I worked as a dancer in the gay clubs on the podium. You know, I did, I did all the boxes. <laughs> I was, I was that 90s gay, right? Oh. I was. I karaoke shows with the, you know, the glittery behind you and stuff like that. And I love it. I absolutely love it. But we have to be careful about that too, don't we? We have to be careful that that doesn't become our brand because that's not who we are. You know, I'm also a lawyer. I'm a university lecturer. I also am yeah. a colleague. You know, there's so many different elements. We're not just queer. Um, and that's it. And, and that's exactly it. Yeah. We have a responsibility to reflect the type of content that we want to see on the screen. And that's why, you know, 
I, I, I'm, I'm gay, I identify as gay, I, the people who I work with on Hits Radio Pride identify as part of the community too. We have open and frank conversations about the content, the music, the playlisting, you know, championing LGBTQ artists, championing LGBTQ plus presenters. We are very acutely aware that the responsibility that we have to making people to educating people. You know, if you look at the soaps from five or 10 years ago and you look at the storylines, the LGBT, you know, the gay characters, the lesbian characters were always the ones there to break up straight marriages. Yeah. <laughs> every soap, every soap. Now that is how- Hold on, hold on. Do you remember when Anna Frail had her snug in Brookside? That was the very first lesbian kiss on Channel 4. That yes, was amazing. Was very first. Yeah. But that's what I mean. They yeah. created that. And what was, you know, what was the issue? It was shocking. Yeah, it's uh, it's up to us to make sure that that doesn't feel shocking, and the only way of doing that is making it part of the fabric of what we do. Yeah, you know, when we've got presenters on air and they are, you know, they're talking about what their pronouns are. You know, when we're introducing presenters and we're introducing artists, you know, it's our responsibility to make sure that those pronouns are right, so that we are educating people in the same way as well. And and that's not that's a new thing. I mean, like trying to educate people about. LGBTQ is is is, an, is is never been an easy position. Yeah. But now there's this huge focus on on gender identity. Yeah. And it becomes it becomes the next big thing that needs to be broken down. Yeah. So we've got responsibilities to make sure you that do. we don't end up like that. We have Absolutely. to reflect what we want to see. I've got to ask you actually, by the way, um, and actually, you'll probably kill me, and she'll probably kill me, but is it your godmom loves to be LTs? <laughs> my my godmother Roz um, is she is Mrs. Bouquet. Yeah. She, honestly, oh my, she's fabulous. She is fabulous. She um she's she's one of the closest people. She I love her to pieces. She's one of the she's one of the, the most dearest people in my life. And I think um, she doesn't mince her words, but she always wants to feel as if she's being accepting and open, and she wants to learn. And I think that's the key thing there is when people don't necessarily yeah. understand. They yeah. want to know. They don't always know if they should ask. Yeah. She never has that problem. She always yeah. asks. Yeah. Um, so for a long time, she kept referring to me as part of the BLT community. <laughs> so, so yes, no, no. I'm afraid I'm. Jo I'm, I'm yes. So, I think I um, think that's a really good first date question. If you were in a BLT, would you be the bacon, the lettuce, or the tomato? Which I one are you? I, I I mean, I genuinely think that she thinks that perhaps we'll get this gay Momo when they add an extra letter on the end. Like, you know, breaking news from the game, you know, LGBTQ plus IA. Um, those, yeah, I mean, look, it's, 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 she, she gets it. She understands yeah. it. And, yeah. and I think that she has the best attitude. Yeah. She asks, nobody is going to, no one is going to shout you down or, or, or get angry with you if you come to it from a, a good place. No, absolutely. I think, I mean, she's seven, she's 76. She's, you know, she's, Lived, from, lived in a village, my godfather's 92. Wow. You know, these are people who have spent such a long part of their lives where homosexuality was not just, you know, a, a unspeakable, but it was outlawed, it was against yeah. the law. It was actually so, a criminal offense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and to go from having that, you know, I think we, especially the kind of, more probably the millennials than the Gen Zs, the Gen yeah. Zs walk around as if, you know, everyone everyone should know what everyone, you know, they should be accepted instantly. And I think yeah. we're in a really good position is that I think we can understand not only that we need to get to a point where everyone doesn't feel the need to have those conversations because they're open, yeah. but also the, the fact that there are people out there who are genuinely not homophobic or against the community. It's just that they've spent so much of their lives being told differently that yeah. it's hard yeah. not to know. And that's the thing. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I've gotten into quite a few debates over this kind of stuff as well. Um, just because somebody either a challenges, you, you know, your queerness or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's OK. It doesn't make them homophobic. It's, uh, you know, they've got to go through a process in their mind and they still don't need to actually think it's a great idea. That's still not homophobic. Um, no. But what I really hate and I hate using phrases like the far right wing media because it just sounds so <laughs> current. And who, I really could you be it. Talking, who could you be talking about? <laughs> I couldn't possibly be talking about anybody you would know. I'm sure you would never watch no, or listen to such things. Um, but, you know, you have the, you know, and they've been on about, you know, you know, somebody misgendered somebody in the whole LG 
LGBTQ world is, you know, going crazy. We aren't. It's a load of nonsense. I, I nearly swore there. It's a load of absolute <laughs> tosh. Um, and the amount of times that I have explained myself to people, I have no problem with that, so long as it's coming from a good place, of course. Um, That's it. You know, we, we, you know, if you misgender somebody or you say something wrong, address it, move on. Nobody's going to get terribly offended. Would you agree with that? Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm not. I'm. I suppose I would. I would. I've always considered myself, and and this is something that I have that I kind of that makes me feel comfortable thinking about almost. But um, I I always thought I well I can pass, and the fact that I am thinking about the fact yeah. that I can pass is something that now is uncomfortable for me. Yeah. Because it was clearly means that in the times that have gone back part by, I felt the need to. I mean I've always thought my blade my my flame burns quite brightly. Yeah. But 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 equally, you know, I'm I you know I, I still um I still can pass as a straight person. Um not very convincingly, uh, not very convincingly, <laughs> but it, it, you know, it tends to be when I get into taxis. Yeah, all right, mate. Oh, mate. Oh, yeah. Right, oh. yeah, right, all right, all right. <laughs> I can do that, no problem. Um, because I still think, like you say, there are people out there, you don't know what type of reaction yeah. you're, you're going to get. You know, yeah. it was everyone um, of a certain age who came out before rules and things like that were introduced and the society was less accepting. It's a stigma that you constantly think about, you know, yeah. you're constantly thinking about if I out myself now, if I casually, I mean, the, the last time I came out was probably about 15 years ago. Yeah. I've never felt the need to announce who I am. Yeah. And I never, I've never felt anyone, um, you know, needing to, you know, being going, oh, so you're gay. You know, it, I've never felt that point. Yeah. And that's what, you know, we're at this point now where, there are programs like Heartstopper, mm -hmm. where there are these really. I've um, not, I've not seen it. I'm not that cool, I'm afraid. Sorry, right, I'm afraid. Tell me about not that. See this. Okay. So, so it's 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 basically a um, it's about two schoolboys who fall in love. Okay. It's not about sex. It's not about um, anything sinister. It's a love story told from the perspective of two boys. Ah, Netflix. School teachers gay as well. No. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yes, I've seen it. I have yeah. seen it. I am cool. I am cool. <laughs> so, but these program, <laughs> these programs are, you know, yeah. they're challenging stereotypes. Yeah. But they're also they're also really powerful. I sat there and wept through most of the episodes because I had a really traumatic child childhood going yeah. through school and, and dealing with sexuality, and I just thought to myself, if every person could experience this situation like that yeah then nobody would you know you're talking before about the fact that you used to watch queer as folk and those types of things yeah those were the only programs on tv that dealt with the more real aspects of the community yeah. you know and it's just unfortunate that those programs also came with an awful lot of sex and profanity <laughs> yes they did you don't want to watch that with your mouth and that's but that's what <laughs> but that's the thing you know that was what i was cra i was craving yeah. not crazy, i wasn't craving <laughs> but i was craving something relatable yeah. yeah and i couldn't see anywhere other than programs like that whereas these days people can watch a love story and they can think well that's for me you know you know that you watch those straight you know boy meets girl girl kisses boy they go yeah. out you know that's a really boring mechanic yeah um, but it's how most well, you know things happen when you're at school and then to suddenly realize that not only could you be dealing with the fact that you're coming out which consumed me when I was at school but you could also be openly happy and talking with friends about who you are as well as falling in love with the school jock like yeah hello i mean that's just every every young queer person's dream yeah not to brag but the school jock fell in love with me i wasn't interested <laughs> 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 but that's a whole other story for a bottle of wine <laughs> <laughs> maybe one more than that <laughs> yeah yeah um so look ross it wouldn't be anthony mates without me getting up close and personal now we're in different countries <laughs> so you're safe right um but you touched on it already and your coming out story and actually school being central uh to, to that experience are you are you happy to share that with us yeah i mean like i say everybody's got the coming out story um maybe one day we'll live in a world where it doesn't matter yeah but i'm quite pleased that 
my coming out story is being shared because I think it's easily, you know, it can be, it's, it's relatable, I think. Um, I, I grew up in a school not far from Liverpool. It's a it kind of um, village type school, 700 pupils. There was no diversity. There was were no black students, no mixed race yeah. students. It was completely white. Um, and uh, no gay students. No uh, gayos. Until I arrived. Um, <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I always knew, like, you know, and I basically, I was 13, 14, um, and was in the school play. And I told a couple of people that I was working, that, that I was, that I, I was close with and I was friends with. And um, being on, being in the school play, one of the girls was, um, playing one of the lead characters and I was uh, also playing one of the lead characters and we just got, you know, we yeah. just talked a lot more than normal. One day I decided, you know, got to school gates or whatever and decided to tell her. She freaked out. <laughs> um, she stormed up to the school um, and I kind of raced after her because I was panicking. Oh my gosh, she's, you know, what yeah. she do? And she walked up to a group of people and just blurted out, Ross has just told me he's gay. And I'm stood maybe 20 feet behind her i hear what she says and then i everyone sees that i'm stood there and it was like one of those moments that just lasts forever yeah everyone's going oh my god oh my god oh my god and i got whisked off into i i well i, I darted i was like i put a hide in the school library yeah uh, my form tutor came out and, and said look you need to go back into the class and i said i can't i absolutely can't and i was just petrified because i thought i'm gonna have to explain this all yeah um, and um, so she, the teacher said to me, look, Ross, if you don't tell me why you need to go in, you're going to have to go to the office. So I, I, saw, and I said to her, I said, they've just found out that I'm gay. And there was this kind of active disengagement from the teacher. She kind of backed off from being concerned to this kind of like, oh, OK. Mm -hmm. um, right. So and, and it was that it was that action. Yeah. That, Put the fear of God into me, and mm. essentially for the rest of that 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 morning, I was taken downstairs. I had to; they wouldn't say it to each other. I had to say, it. "Ross has got Ross has got something to tell us." Tell you know. So there was maybe four or five people in the school office, and they were going through books and files to find out what the procedure would be. The head teacher had no idea. So, so, all so of this just just, just, on. just to insert in here, this is at the time of Section Twenty, of course. That's, yeah, that's what I was getting yeah. to. The, the, the yeah. point the the, the the point being is that I seeing this as a rejection of me yeah. and, and it, you know me being dirty and, and and you know and disgraceful but they were looking at it upon the fact that they couldn't get involved i yeah. didn't know that i only found out that this was an issue yeah 15 years later um section 28 stopped people from you know essentially the wording was you know schools cannot promote homosexuality yeah but the word promote is never defined it's never yeah. explained. and every teacher and every pupil could also make the same argument. It's the same way. It's the same as the, you know, the laws in in Russia. Yeah, you know, it's not illegal, but promoting it is. But if you can't define it, then it can be. You know, you can always yeah. find a case of being able to. Yeah, you know, merely to saying it can be classed as promotion, sort of thing. Exactly. So mm -hmm. the teachers didn't know what to do, and and essentially the decision they made was that Ross, we're going to have to call your your parents, and they're going to have to come in. So they just they felt they couldn't handle any of this. So they called my mom. My mom was told she needs to come to the school as soon as possible. They couldn't tell her why. Um, they just told her he's not you know he's not he's not sick or hurt and he's not killed anyone. Those were the phrase. Those were the words that we used. So my oh, mom. Oh, imagine she being the dad. parent. Imagine being the parent getting that call. But imagine being the person waiting, knowing that I've got to you know this whole thing was being built up as this huge stage performance because by the time I got to, uh, you know, my mum had arrived, thankfully my she, my mum had panicked and called my dad and yeah. he, was a, he was a bus driver so he was trying to figure out what the hell he, heck he was going to do but thankfully he didn't get there in time for, for the for the big moment but essentially yeah. there, was a, there was a head teacher, form teacher, three or four school administrators, so me and my mum. So just going back, so you're standing in a room with all these teachers and admin staff and they phoned your mum and you know they're about to out you to your mum and you're what age you 13 12 13. Oh, yeah, 13. Um, what what's the thoughts in your head at that point ross what's going through your mind at that you're standing there in this experience what are you thinking i knew who i was i always knew who i was yeah no one no you know i mean i understand people discover who they are but i, I was always i always knew who i was and for those, those, you know, for that day and those really 
those emotions, mm -hmm. I it the response that I was given to the info, you know, to what I'd said, even if you know nobody, not one person said to me, "Look, there are rules that mean that we can't talk to you about this." Yeah, I was never their ex, but their responses were never explained, and so all of those emotions that I thought could would be serious and you know I'd be in trouble and all all this other stuff was kind of in my head as this is all my fault this is something that I've done what I shouldn't have said anything you know the the, the obvious questions kept getting asked you know like you know it's, it's the phase you don't know what you're talking yeah. about but I, I mean the school basically said look I mean you're going to be bullied you're going to be bullied you know um it's nothing that you can do about it. And the problem was the school couldn't do anything either. They could stop physical bullying. Yeah. In the same way that if you were being racist or you were making other comments about someone's appearance, because sexuality was not ident it wasn't recognized as part of the curriculum. And obviously because of this promotion act, the wording for the for, for section 28, they, they basically weren't able to um, punish people for making those comments in the same way as they would if you know they can stop it they can stop that but the person can't be penalized for what they're saying because it's not officially recognized oh i see what you mean so it couldn't actually be bullying because it can't actually be talked about to be bullying so therefore it, can be, it doesn't can, exist kind of thing exactly they can stop yeah. it they can, if there's a fight they can stop right. it if there is, yeah you know anything like that but I mean, if you were to say someone, oh, you know, you, if, if, if someone wants to make a comment about my weight and they said, oh, I was fat. Yeah. That, that, that essentially, if someone was to make a racist comment, the racist comment, despite the fact that it's still words, the ramifications of it and the fact that it's a protected characteristic would mean that, the, you know, you would be seriously in trouble for that. Even yeah. though it was the same as calling somebody fat, it was the opposite with anything to do with sexuality. They could stop it, but they couldn't punish it because punishment meant acknowledging that it existed. So this whole thing happens. I mean, it, and, and they basically said, look, you're going to have to go back in the closet. You know, you're going to have to, it's the only way we can protect you. And I just remember thinking it's the first adult decision that I can ever remember thinking that I made the right decision. Even on these yeah. Later. Yeah. I, I can't go back in. I know I have to live with this. And as a result, I almost felt like I had to prove to, to, to everyone around me that that's who I was. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. there was no way that I could go through this a second time. Um, you know, how my did dad, you cope? How did you cope with that? I mean, you're only a kid. How did you? Well, cope my mom. That? Well, one of the teachers asked me, and I can't remember saying this to her, but years later, she said to me, "You know, how how did you, how do you cope with stuff being said? I mean, 700 pupils." not huge diversity and yeah. everybody knows who you are not yeah. least because i was in the school play and i sang and all that <laughs> stuff so i was already written off when it came to credibility yeah. Yeah. so add this on top of that and i just said like i i almost feel like i have to pretend that i'm a celebrity and you know like and, and like you know celebrities might get a bit of flack here and there and i when she was telling me this back i, I, I can't love saying this to her but it was such as it was so sad to hear that that i'd said that because it almost felt like I'd accepted that that's how I deserve to be treated. Yeah. Not only by the, like, yeah, it's the school it's like kids, the, but by the teachers. Like, you the, know, the, like the bearded lady at the show kind of thing. There's nothing that yeah. I can say that would made would have made a difference. But I will say this, the sec section 28, when it was canceled, because that was so closely linked to education, when it was yeah. canceled in 2003, when it was finally repealed, LGBT History Month started. Yeah. And it's something that I'm really, I'm really passionate about now. Um, both representing it on on, yeah. uh, on radio and media for, for for work, but but personally because there's a uh, there's an organisation called Schools Out, and they are in schools talking to children about representation. And it's so nice to know that the school that I went to today they have an LGBT an alliance. Mm -hmm. They, uh, one of the girls that I went to school with, um, she came out as as lesbian. She's part of the board of governors, and she also runs this group. There are so many rules these days that protect yeah. who you are as, as as anything like that. To not just to 
sexuality, but also to gender. And, and I think to myself, it's stories like mine where you're able to see the progress yeah. that show you we are still moving we're bounding forward we will not get there tomorrow or even next year but knowing that i can look back and see how we've changed over 20 years i feel more confident that we are moving forward still yeah. means that we need to put the effort in there oh we absolutely do um you know the if we get weary in any way, it'll um, it'll disappear from under us. And, and actually, when you said that and, and talked about LGBT history month, I thought to myself, hmm, what have I done? And and and, and I'm embarrassed to admit this, but it, it has kind of not been in my mind. No. Um, and my agent got in touch with me for this one and went like, because they do a lot of PR on Insta mm -hmm. and different sort of stuff. And they said, look, have you done anything for LGBT history month? Because I'm one of their LGBT -ers. and I went. Oh, is that what is it now? Oh right, okay. Oh uh, and she says, uh, can you make a video? <laughs> <laughs> we, can you get we, something? And then I felt terrible. You have you know? to, you have to. I mean like this, you know, I, I work for I work for Bauer and I'm, and as part in that role I, I'm LGBTQ lead for um, our DNI initiatives. Um, but I also speak frequently with the people who run our radio stations. Yeah. And for LGBT History Month. You know, it's been around since 2003 and it's so important because it celebrates the peoples whose shoulders we stand on today. Yeah. Those brave people who made the first steps. Yeah. You know, they recognizing who they are and showing people that they can be the brave one. They can yeah. be their hero for somebody else. Yeah. It's important. And that's why, um, you know, on Hits Radio Pride, it's all we talk about yeah. uh, for that month. You know, our, our radio brands, whether it be um, Kerrang! or um, we, uh, we also own Motorcycle News and Performance yeah. Bikes. Yeah. You know, these really masculine, traditional yeah. masculine brands. Um, but we're challenging it. And during, L during those LGB History Month, um, uh, LGB History Month activity, we try and make sure that that representation is shown. But it only works when the people who are, have got the power like, you know, working on a radio station, working yeah. in the media, we have to be the ones that say this needs to be said. And I think because we, when we grow up, we longed to see those people that we could say is, you know, that's that's where I want to be or that's who I want to be. And if he did it, why can't I do it? The only way that happens is if we recognize that, that we needed that voice yeah. and in the jobs and positions that we're in, we are making sure that we're championing those right yeah. from the start. Yeah. So the reason that you've probably not heard of it massively is because realistically, and it's only really come up in prominence the last three years. Yeah. You know, there's a fabulous woman who runs it called Sue Sanders. I always, I always refer to her as she's a very militant, a militant woman. Yeah. She, she sends, she sends every email in solidarity. And, and I'm just thinking you know, there, are, there are so many people who, um, who need to hear you know, need to be educated on those things. Yeah. And knowing that it starts at education, that they're going into these schools and they're speaking to people about it. Yeah. It's really powerful and important. And it's yeah. almost more important than celebrating pride because, you know, pride can be, like you say, it can be, it can become just a party. It can. And you forget the, you get the reasoning. You forget it's, a pro it's actually a protest. It's a global protest. Yeah. <laughs> but that's you know? not how it's reflected sometimes. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. where, that's why it's difficult. Some people, this is where the whole pride washing stuff comes in. Yeah. No Knows yeah. how it's a fine line. Whereas yeah. with History Month, in the same way that um, um, you know National AIDS Awareness Day in December, those type those those key moments, making sure that we're marking them is important. Because yeah, we get some thirteen year old. You know, there's a thirteen year old Ross sat there right now. Yeah, back years ago, waiting to hear something that he can relate to. Yeah, and I I feel proud that you know with Hits Radio Pride, there is something there now that I think Ross. From 13 years ago can relate to that, listen Ross, i think that's excellent and i think we all um all of us under the career umbrella we really do have a responsibility um if we're comfortable no you know i'm not talking about pushing people out of clubs no, and stuff nobody but, you know but nobody we've got to it. we've got to do what we can do you know i mean i remember i was involved with belfast pride back in i think it was 97 98 and there was literally about 200 of us went through Belfast City Centre with the double decker bus, right? Um, and they shouted pedophiles and freaks and all, all, all the, the the names that you could possibly imagine. Hundred thousand people attended it this year. Granny yeah. down to Bobby. 
Absolutely. You it know? doesn't happen. It doesn't happen without hard work. Yeah. And you know what? Those people, they're still there. Yeah. But guess what? Guess what? There's 30 people in front of them yeah. who are shouting and, and clapping. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, know, yeah. you have to, and that's not always easy to see past. Mm -hmm. you know, there, there are so many, especially in Northern Ireland, there are so yeah. many small pride events. Yeah. You know, those 200 people that were in Belfast, you know, there is a, the, the smallest pride. We, we, we were focusing on, um, uh, we were focusing on um, celebrating different types of pride events yeah. across the UK. Uh, last year and um there were more than 200 over the summer right um, there is at least three happening every saturday but not all of them are brighton and belfast and manchester yeah. some of them are tiny and they are brilliant because yeah. the bravery that it took those first people yeah. to set it up in belfast back in the day and the very first people who you know took up a stand at stonewall those are the people who had they were brave and those people who are in villages who've just done a pride and there's maybe only a couple of hundred people who live in the village mm -hmm. and they decide to do a pride walk and it's just a couple of people yeah but it's those people that you know they're not able to brand it they, they take the responsibility seriously yeah yeah it's and really it's, good. And it's yeah. something that you've got to admire I, yeah i really do i really really do um and we we, we all um we all have got to stick together but like i've got to ask you so we have pride, obviously, everybody thinks of it as a summer thing. How on earth do you engage your audience 12 months a year? How do you do this? <laughs> when was the last time you heard someone say to you in the middle of, you know, if you do something really good, your mom just doesn't say, oh, you're not, you know, I'm not proud of you because it's winter. Your people are proud all year round. No, I don't. I, I don't still remember out, that. <laughs> and, uh, I don't walk out the house on the 31st of, uh, 31st of September and think to myself, oh, well, that's it, my pride's gone. It's all gone nobody, now. <laughs> nobody is, pride, pride is a feeling, yeah. state of mind. It's an acceptance of who you are and, um, and, and almost a, a statement of defiance of protecting yeah. who you are to people. Um, there are a lot of business reasons why you know, radio stations, TV channels don't stay around for 12 months of the year. I mean, the, the best example that I can probably give is MTV. They they do MTV Pride. They yeah. call it TV channels and they call it MTV Pride. And that's purely because they only are playing music for those, you know, that kind of, it's a, it's a type of music that's around. But yeah. For, for Hits Radio Pride, the summer is our pinnacle. That's where yeah. we're at events, we're, you know, we're talking with people. But, you know, there are, there are, right now, there is probably like five or six versions of RuPaul's Drag Race being recorded somewhere out there. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, those people need to be heard. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> as well as that type of stuff, it doesn't just stop. But we, you know, we, we, we kind of have these pillars that we focus on. So we, we do a Pride poll at the start of the um, Pride season to find the best pride and the best pride moments. Yeah. Um, champion that and we celebrate the work that those local small towns and councils are doing to, to deliver that and we, we encourage people to vote we're about to start a, a process for um, looking for a new presenter we have this presenter talent competition yeah um, and um and it, it's essentially us trying to find somebody in the community who could be the next big thing okay um, but that the, you know, they're them and I'm just, uh, I'm just let me just adjust my makeup. Which, so, <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the whole point there, is, Mr. Drilly. <laughs> I, look, I grew up, I grew up loving radio, radio yeah. was my thing, and I always knew I was gay. I never yeah. realized that I could be gay and be radio, wow, that just yeah. never crossed my mind. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like you were saying before, that you know, not everybody feels like they can be who they want to be all of the time, and yeah. especially when it comes to, to media, because you, people are petrified of upsetting everyone. So it takes somebody to go in and say, look, you know, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to pick somebody because they are camp, but I'm not, not going to pick them because yeah. they're camp. So this is, this is about representing not just, um, you know, get, white gay, gay men, but also making sure that we've got representation within LGBTQ um, across all of the country. Um, mm -hmm. And that's important. And then we also do a thing, we also do things like the, um, pro, the something which runs all year round is called Priority Play. And we're working with new LGBTQ plus artists. We're celebrating yeah. really big bangers as well. Yeah. But, you know, getting in an interview, speaking with them, doing that yeah. sort of stuff. All of the, all of these things, 
yes, we could have just run it for three or four months. Yeah. But realistically, for it to work and to have an impact, it's got to be there all the time. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. And, and that's why, and that's why it is, you know, we're lucky to work for a company who really believe in it. Yeah. And, um, and I genuinely think that, you know, there are other businesses that perhaps are not in a similar position and there are a lot of other challenges, but we're very lucky that we've got a brand like Hits Radio, which is national. Um, they've got a backbone of stations across the UK and we've got presenters and, and teams of people who can really, who are really creative. Yeah. And it's not pride, it's Eurovision. And Eurovision's coming to England. I mean, come on. I know, Eurovision shut up, shut UK. up. <laughs> so, so, you know, we for the last yeah. two years, we've gone Eurovision crazy. And know. you know, next year feels like it's our award because we actually get to bring it to home, you know? It's oh. kind of, it's actually, that, this one has actually put me a bit on the spot. So, <clears throat> I was supposed to uh, fly out to the last Eurovision for Queer 40 and do kind of like a web series, live Insta, sort of Facebook lives, all this sort of stuff, and then set up some interviews and I was massively committed to it. Um, but then I was also finishing off my barrister training at the same time and also with Miss Lecture and it just didn't happen. Um, so I never got around to organising anything else and it's just become one of those things. And now it's coming to England, it's kind of like, it no. almost feels like the gay gods have went, Mr. Miller. <laughs> <laughs> you did not come to the mountain the mountain has now come to you <laughs> it's important it's important yeah. i mean it will literally be it will literally be like a live version of ground of grinder yeah and, you know it's just uh, and nobody you know nobody's not happy with that yeah. so you know there are so there are still a lot of towns and there are a lot of cities that i think there's i think there's maybe four or five it's manchester liverpool yeah in there but you know obviously that the the point being is that where they're obviously representing ukraine and obviously the difficulties that they're having in being able to host it but mm -hmm. i think it will mean an awful lot to our community for us to be able to be there and be part of something yeah, which is amazing. bigger than us it's, yeah. it's always a nice experience yeah absolutely amazing so ross i mean it's not often we get to thank the people who are, are who are effectively you're a trailblazer you know you're making change and you're making change at a national level and an international i mean bar media isn't a local radio station it's the biggest in europe and one of the biggest media stations in the world um you went in there you asked for change you you've affected change um and i just personally i want to thank you for that um, you. you know, you're because making there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. It only has, you know, it takes one person to create the idea, but there's a lot of people to grow and build. And I'm yeah. really lucky to work where I do yeah. and with who I do, and um, and we will continue to do that. You know, yeah. it's what it's what means more to me than anything these days. And I think after the pandemic, um, you know, it, to feel like you can make a difference is, was a really big part of it. And I, I was so lucky to be able to to work on this idea whilst the world was going through the worst of the worst experiences. Um, yeah. So thank you. That was really nice. No, I, I genuinely mean it. Um, and I, I hope that you can take that on board and, and know and and know that you're doing something really fantastic and we and we're we're, we're all we're all behind you. Um, <laughs> thank you. So lastly, how do people listen to Hit Radio Pride? <laughs> so uh, we're on DAB uh, across yeah. parts of the UK. You can listen on your smart speaker. <laughs> don't dare say her name but we won't but we won't ask her and you can also listen on the hits radio app as well <laughs> thank you so much ross it's been absolutely gorgeous speaking to you thank you thank all you the very, very best take care oh. bye. bye let me tell you hits radio pride is coming in three minutes homosexual behavior between adult consenting males should no longer be a criminal offence. Should no longer be a criminal offence. Five years after the decriminalisation of homosexuality, London played host to its first Pride Festival, which soon spread all over the world. The government is planning to give homosexual partners many of the same rights as married couples. I wish to be judged as a human being. As the support of MPs from all the main political parties. Not as a lesbian. All people should be treated equally. Don't wanna keep, keep, keep us out, can't hold us down anymore. We gonna ride, 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 ride till we fall. We kept being asked how we would be able to provide a male role model for our daughter. I love the idea of becoming a mum. Because we were in a same-sex relationship. Hits Radio Pride is coming in two minutes. Just look to the rainbow.
As gay couples legally tie the knot. Victory for gay and lesbian couples. For the very first time. Fought so long for their basic civil rights. The ban on homosexuals serving in the military has been suspended. Finally, lesbian and gay citizens will become fully equal. The UK's first fully decorated Pride train is making its first journey today, complete with a huge rainbow flag. All loving same-sex couples, the dignity of marriage across this great land. And I'm right over here. Why can't you see me? If I feel like a woman, and you didn't even know I wasn't a woman, then what's the problem? And it fills me up. And it starts to shine And I see it burn when you bring me so loud Loud and proud Loud and proud Loud and proud Loud and proud Turn it loud Loud and proud Getting ready to go loud and proud Across the UK Hits Radio Pride is coming in one minute Good morning. It has just gone eight o'clock. Welcome to the family. My name is Jordan Lee and this is Hits Radio Pride. It's an entirely new station for the LGBTQ plus community and we're just kicking things off with a bang. We've got some of music's greats with us to start. Kylie Minogue is going to be here. M&EK, Regard, Sagala, Anne-Marie, Mel C, an actual Spice Girl, and so much more. I'm going to be with you from 7 every morning. Charlie Powell in the afternoon, and we're in the mix from 7 every single night. There's so much to tell you about, but we've got to start somewhere. So, our first guest on Hits Radio Pride, and here to help press play on the first ever track... It is Ollie Alexander from Years and Years. Oh my God! What? No! <laughs> I mean, launching a new radio station is one thing. Launching it for you know our community, for our queer siblings, is another thing. I am on a high, obviously. How are you feeling about being part of this moment? Let's launch, baby! I'm so excited. <laughs> How amazing! I've never been part of this sort of launch before. I mean, it's amazing, historic. I'm very, very excited. And I'm so grateful for you to be here. And you have the all important job of hitting play on this brand new radio station. Are you ready for this? I've thought about, you know, what song encapsulates, um, you know, everything just like joyous and a celebration and like one of the best songs of the previous decade, really. So yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to play the first song. Are you ready? Well, I'm going to hand over the reins to you. (laughs) Oli Alexander, take it away. Yes, I do indeed. And I'm going to give you a good song for this first play. One of the best. I'm very, very, very excited to hit play on this. Uh, One of my personal favourite songs, and I hope yours too, it is King by Years and Years. King, Years and Years on Hits Radio Prime. We've done it! Hits Radio Prime. 